In 1849, a young Chinese student called Huang Quan made the epic journey from the Far East to Scotland and became the first ever Chinese to graduate from a European university when he gained a medical degree from the University of Edinburgh. He was the first of many thousands of Chinese students who have come to Scotland to gain an education, building relations between the two countries along the way. The relationship was further enhanced last year with the opening of the Confucius Institute for Scotland, one of over 200 institutes set up by the Chinese government around the world to help promote a better understanding of Chinese language and culture. We are working in three areas, that's culture, education and business. And the main aim is on the first hand to promote understanding of China in general to the general public. And it's also a different image of China that we want to present than it's, that is normally represented in the media, which is much about China's economic growth and the miracle of China. But this is only a very small part of China. It's the first time the Chinese government tries to engage not only as an economic player, but to present itself as a cultural nation as well. The Confucius Institutes, named after the famous Chinese philosopher, have been set up by Hanban part of the Chinese Ministry of Education, in partnership with educational institutions around the world. It's run as a collaborative partnership. So our main partner is Fudan University in Shanghai, with Edinburgh University, and they send co-director every year. So we do it together. The Confucius Institute for Scotland had been operating for several months before it finally moved into its permanent home, the stunning baronial mansion Abden House, in September of last year. In a mark of the importance of the event, Scotland's First Minister Alex Salmond joined Edinburgh University Principal Professor Sir Tim O'Shea and Minister Councillor Wang Yongda from the Chinese Embassy to officially open the institute by unveiling a statue of Huang Quan. The launch itself was a big event. We got delegations coming from China and we received a beautiful statue. So that's a very nice symbol of these long-standing educational links between Edinburgh University and China. The core purpose of the Institute is to promote the teaching of the Chinese language and knowledge about China. And utilizing the academic expertise available to it from the University of Edinburgh and Fudan University, it brings together teachers from China and this country to run a diverse programme of language and cultural studies courses, as well as seminars on business, law and contemporary Chinese society. We are delivering classes, normal educational classes in language and culture, society and politics. There are a number of other organisations offer language classes, but we have a quality and depth to that. I thought it was a good idea from the Scottish point of view to kind of start to learn Chinese, be able to communicate. We've always got translators but even just to say welcome, and we would go travel and actually be able to speak some of the language. <laughs> so what the intention is the company is, my manager is proposing to Clyde Pumps to promote the institute here to come to the factory and actually run courses within the company there. It's not about people need to learn about Chinese culture, it's to learn about what is happening in the world today. And the world today is many different countries are working together at one. We are teaching now in the Royal Bank of Scotland. We have had courses together with uh, the director of the zoo in Edinburgh because the panda is coming over, hopefully. We have made contacts with Standard Life and different companies here, so we're not only teaching in the institute, but also at workplaces. As well as language teaching, part of the remit of the institute is to go out into the community and actively promote knowledge about China's culture and society and the Institute has been actively involved in the year-long China Now Festival, a series of events right across Scotland. When we launched China Now in Scotland, we were fortunate enough to do that with a lantern festival at uh, the Botanics, which ran for three weeks. Cinema China 2007. It was Mark Cousins, the former director of the International Festival here, who has organised it, but we were contributing with educational programmes. It took place in the film house and they said they had the biggest box office ever. Everything was sold out completely and we, we didn't expect that. One of the highlights of China now is the arrival in Edinburgh of the documentary exhibition China, a Photographic Portrait, a stunning insight into contemporary China. The photographic exhibition was a big opportunity, I think, to, to show images of China which you normally wouldn't see.
the sunshine from here. We engage very much in educational programs in schools to build up sustainable links. It's important to start as early as possible for children to get an awareness that China is becoming an important global power and it's influencing the whole world. But the Institute is not simply a language school or a promoter of cultural events. It also seeks to build long-standing relationships with Chinese partner institutions and in Abdon House has a building capable of hosting events of all sorts, from international lecture series to conferences with China specialists from all over the world in business, media and history. We have meetings here from the Scottish government. They organize their meetings here or from business circles or the Royal Society. Whenever there is an interaction between Scotland and China, this is a very nice place to come. The Institute is also a hub for information for Scottish people who are going to China, whether they are going there for business or pleasure, and a home for the burgeoning Chinese community in Scotland, a place to celebrate their festivals and build friendships. The Chinese New Year, of course, is a major celebration, and we felt that we should try to run something here, so we did send out an invitation which was responded to extremely wholeheartedly. We had mainly Chinese students in the university, which came a big party of 250 people dancing. Although only officially open for a few months, the Confucius Institute for Scotland was named an exemplar institute in 2007, and the principal of Edinburgh University, Professor Sir Tim O'Shea, was invited to sit on the Confucius Institute Headquarter Council, the management body for Confucius Institutes worldwide. With all these activities, we were then now selected as a model institute among 200 over, all over the world. Over the coming years, the Confucius Institute will be a key player in not only increasing the access to and number of people learning Chinese in this country and building a broader understanding of Chinese culture, but also in improving relationships at every level between Scotland, China and the people of the two countries. We hope to enlarge the programmes and to establish ourselves as the main point of reference for engagement with China.